A blunt hammer of misinformation has smashed this city in two, creating two equally extreme sides of the same rotten egg. Lethargic citizens in a zombie-like trance who take comfort in the overconsumption of the genetic waste they call food. And the extremists who use the perversion of science to modify their bodies for an always out of reach aesthetic ideal. Overseeing it all is the corporation who feeds the public misinformation and unattainable dreams in order to keep them all under their ever watchful eye. Roaming the streets are the various gangs the corporation purposely pits against one another in order to keep themselves out of the spotlight and free from criticism. Sorry for interrupting this movie. It's time for some science. The buff dude's adrenaline levels are spiking while they are charging at these evil guys. However, these dudes got beaten up in this fight because they did not eat their cereal, Buff Loops. We can say that the secret ingredient in this cereal that is responsible for fueling those buff dudes with higher adrenaline levels was tyrosine hydroxylase, which is the protein of interest in this video. Adrenaline is a neurohormone that corresponds to the class of catecholamines. The three catecholamines are adrenaline, norepinephrine, and dopamine. The synthesis of these three neurotransmitters takes place through the same pathway, and the rate limiting step for this synthetic pathway is the reaction that transforms L-tyrosine into L-dopa and is catalyzed by tyrosine hydroxylase. Tyrosine hydroxylase is a tetramer of four identical subunits. Each tetramer consists of three domains, a carboxyl terminal that forms a tetramerization domain, a large catalytic domain, and an amino terminal regulator domain. The c terminal domain of each monomer of tyrosine hydroxylase forms two distinct interfaces. For example, monomer 1 and 2 interact together through the catalytic and the tetramerization domain, while monomer 1 and 3 interact solely through the tetramerization domain. The large catalytic domain contains all the residues that are necessary to catalyze the hydroxylation of L-tyrosine into L-dopa. In this domain, there is a specific active site where this reaction takes place. Each catalytic subunit of the tetramer is coordinated by an iron 2 atom. The oxidation state of this iron atom is very important for the catalytic turnover for this enzyme. This iron atom is directly coordinated by two histidine residues and a glutamate residue. These three residues form the histidine carboxylate facial triad. These residues help stabilize the iron 2 atom which is very important for the catalysis of the reaction of L-tyrosine. As for the N-terminal domain, there are four different versions of this regulatory domain in human, and thus four versions of the enzyme, which depends on alternative splicing. This domain has not been crystallized yet, but it has been suggested that the N-terminal domain is an intrinsically unstructured protein which has no clear defined tertiary structure, but so far, no evidence has been presented supporting the claim. Now moving on from the amazing structural features of tyrosine hydroxylase to its regulation, this enzyme is re regulated by different mechanisms. But because I have limited time in this video, I will go over two major regulatory examples. Tyrosine hydroxylase is regulated by downstream catecholamines which exert an inhibitory effect on the enzyme. These catecholamines bind to the active site and near the regulatory domain. The binding induces a change in the conformation of the enzyme to a more rigid conformation, thus obstructing the entrance of the substrate tyrosine into the active site of the enzyme. Further, recent research showed that tyrosine hydroxylase is regulated by a protein called alpha-synuclein. Before I discuss this new topic of research, let me briefly introduce alpha-synuclein. Alpha-synuclein is an abundant presynaptic pr protein implicated in neuronal plasticity and neurodegenerative diseases. This protein is an unstructured soluble protein that can form insoluble aggregates in dopaminergic neurons. These aggregates form Lewy bodies, and Lewy bodies formation is indicative of certain pathological conditions such as Parkinson's disease. Parkinson's is characterized by low levels of dopamine because of the deterioration of a specific brain region, the substantia nigra, where tyrosine hydroxylase is most abundant. The most recent studies have found that overexpression of alpha-synuclein does not change the concentration of tyrosine hydroxylase. However, these studies show that alpha-synuclein activates a signal transduction cascade, 
which leads to the dephosphorylation of serine 40 residue in the N-terminal regulatory domain. This dephosphorylation greatly decreased the activity of tyrosine hydroxylase in dopaminergic cells. As a result, dopamine production in the neurons of the substantia nigra declines, and this decline further leads to the observed motor symptoms in Parkinson's disease. To wrap it up, we have seen how interesting the structure of tyrosine hydroxylase is. It is very important for catecholamine synthesis and it's highly regulated by different substrates. Its inactivity is also correlated with the development of Parkinson's disease. Now you should remember that every time you initiate a fight or flight response, what's making your adrenaline levels increase is the upregulation of tyrosine hydroxylase. Oh, and now the buff dudes are back stronger and healthier. Enjoy. Enemy waits just beyond the French fry colored horizon, eager to dip them head first in their vats of high fructose corn syrup and stamp them in their gelatin molds so that they'll become a chubby foot soldier in their oversized and overweight army. The line has been drawn, and the battle cry, always outnumbered, never outgunned, rings throughout the streets once again. Are you ready?